Hello and welcome to the Mastermind semi-finals with me, Clive Myrie. In the spotlight tonight are Sharon Chambers, a contact centre representative. Her specialist subject is the English actor Peter Cushing. Elliot Hooson, an operations manager whose subject is the history of percussion instruments. Sadie D'Souza, a pharmacy assistant who will be answering questions on the television series The Sarah Jane Adventures. And Thomas Nelson, a teacher. His specialist subject, Sir Bobby Robson. Not long now before the opening whistle blows on another Mastermind semi-final. Our contenders will be put through their paces once again in a rigorous test of memory and knowledge. The spotlight, the clock counting down and the black chair. Mere trifles to be swatted away if you've done your homework. Giant boulders of pain if you haven't. Two minutes on their specialist subject and two and a half minutes on general knowledge will decide who'll go through to the Mastermind Grand Final for a chance to lift the ultimate quizzing prize, this magnificent glass bowl. So, can I ask our first semi-final contender to join us, please? Your name? Sharon Chambers. Your occupation? Contact centre representative. And your specialist subject? Peter Cushing. The suave and sophisticated British actor who lent a sinister edge to the Hammer Horror and Star Wars series of films. In two minutes, let's go. What childhood nickname did Peter Cushing's brother David give to his younger sibling, which provided the title of a chapter in the actor's autobiography? Bright eyes. Yes, in 1936, Cushing started his first professional job as assistant stage manager at which theatre in Worthing, run at the time by the actor Bill Fraser? Uh, Greyville. No, Connaught Theatre was the title of Cushing's debut Hammer film, released in 1957, which has been described as the first really gory horror film showing blood and guts in colour. Curse of Frankenstein. Yes, Cushing travelled to Hollywood in 1939 and made his big screen debut in The Man in the Iron Mask, starring which actor who befriended Cushing and invited him to stay at his villa while they were both filming? Louis Haywood. Yes, Cushing appeared in a number of Morecambe and Wise shows in which, as a running gag, he demanded overdue payment for his original appearance with them when he played which legendary figure? Sherlock Holmes. No, King Arthur. After spending three years in Hollywood, Cushing returned home during the war on a merchant navy ship, which in peacetime carried what cargo? Coal. No, bananas. In 1976, Cushing guest starred as the kidnapped Dr. Van Klaus in The Eagle's Nest, the first episode of what television series? The Avengers. No, The New Avengers. What's the title of the episode in the 1980s television anthology series Hammer House of Horror that stars Cushing as a seemingly kind pet shop owner with a dark past and features Brian Cox as a former prisoner? Silent Scream. Yes, Cushing and his wife Helen married in 1943, having met when she joined the cast of a touring production of what play in which he was appearing? School for Scandal? No, Private Lives, which friend and fellow horror film star described Cushing as the only actor who can read the times, drink his whiskey and soda, light his pipe and deliver his dialogue all at the same time? Christopher Lee. Yes, Cushing's Hammer films, The Mummy, The Hound of the Baskervilles and The Abominable Snowman were largely made at which studio later the subject of a campaign he supported to save it from demolition? Bray. It was Bray. And Sharon, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got six points. Thank you. And our next contender, please. Your name? Elliot Hooson. Your occupation? Operations manager. And your specialist subject? The history of percussion instruments. Drums and other percussion instruments from around the world. In two minutes, let's go. Francois Joseph Gossex, Marche Le Goubre, is often credited with introducing what East Asian instrument, sometimes called a tam-tam, to Western orchestral music? 
Gong. Yes, the Saran and the Kendang form part of what traditional Indonesian musical ensemble composed primarily of percussion instruments? Gamelan. Yes, what portable snare drum, popular in Europe in the Middle Ages, was commonly played simultaneously with a small pipe forming what has been described as the original one-man band? Tabor. Yes, what name derived from a Greek verb meaning to shake is given to a sacred rattle-like instrument from ancient Egypt that consisted of sliding rods mounted in a frame? Sistrum. Yes, a so-called monster bass drum, which had a diameter of around seven feet, was created by which London instrument maker for a festival at the Crystal Palace in 1857? Henry Diston. Yes, what instrument common in Afro-Cuban folk music and typically included in rumba bands consists simply of a pair of short wooden sticks that are hit together? Claves. Yes, the Turkish crescent, an ornate upright percussion instrument traditionally used in military bands, is also known alliteratively as a jingling what? Johnny. Yes, what name normally given to a keyboard instrument playing bells did George Frederick Handel use to refer to an unusual instrument he included in his oratorio Saul? Glass harmonica? No, Carillion. The steel pan or steel drum is generally considered to have been invented on which Caribbean island? Trinidad. Yes, a dance manual entitled Orchezography, published in 1588 and regarded as an important historical source on drumming technique, was written by which French cleric? Georges Kastner? No, Twano Abo. What name of Arabic origin is given to small medieval kettle drums introduced to Europe following the Crusades, which were typically played in pairs and suspended from the player's belt? Nakers. Yes. What composition by the French composer Edgar Varese? I've studied so I'll finish. Edgar Varese, premiered in 1933, is recognized as one of the first concert works to be written solely for percussion. Ionisation. It is Ionisation. And Elliot, you had uh, no passes at the end of that round. You've got 10 points. <laughs> Our next contender, please. Your name? Sadie D'Souza. Your occupation? Pharmacy assistant. And your specialist subject? The Sarah Jane Adventures. The spin off series from Doctor Who, first broadcast from 2007 to 2011, which follows the exploits of the titular investigative journalist played by the late Elizabeth Sladen. In two minutes, let's go. In the opening story, Invasion of the Bane, Sarah Jane Smith investigates a mysterious alien presence in a factory producing what fictional energy drink? Bubble shock. Yes, in Revenge of the Slitheen, when the head teacher, Mr. Blakeman, tells his pupils that he had cabbage and bean tartlets the night before, he declares that it's yet another reason to despise which celebrity chef? Jamie Oliver. Yes, what's the full name of the supposed child genius who works at the Faros Institute in The Lost Boy, who's described by Sarah Jane as an obnoxious brat? Nathan Goss. Yes, in Eye of the Gorgon, B, a resident at the Lavender Lawns rest home, tells Sarah Jane that her husband once described a member of what alien race as looking like a huge potato with a ray gun? Santaran. Yes, in Secrets of the Stars, the astrologer Martin Truman is booked to appear on the programme Paranormal Planets, replacing what guest who's cancelled after claiming to have fallen downstairs in her bungalow? The Celestial Deirdre. Yes, what's the title of William Bonneville's 1802 painting of a sinister masked highwayman that's brought to life by the title character of the episode Mona Lisa's Revenge? The Dark Rider? Yes, in The Gift, the aliens Tree and Leaf are voiced respectively by Simon Callow and which actress? Miriam Margulies. Yes, in The Temptation of Sarah Jane Smith. What's the name of the young boy who lures Sarah Jane back to 1951 so she can meet her parents? Oscar. Yes, in The Eternity Trap, when Sarah Jane's friends Rani and Clyde encounter ghostly activity at Ashen Hill Manor, Professor Rivers suggests that they experienced what kind of manifestation? Psychic? No, stone tape. In the episode Sky, what's the name of the nuclear power station in which Miss Myers, from an alien race called the flesh kind, first materializes on Earth? Summerwell. Yes, in Death of the Doctor, Sarah Jane, Rani and Clyde attend a funeral service for the Doctor at Unit Base 5, constructed inside which mountain? Snowden. Yes, in The Man Who Never Was. Rani and Clyde gate crash. I've started so I'll finish. Rani and Clyde gate crash the press launch for a new portable computer called Surfboard by posing as journalists for what fictitious magazine? Twilight Years. It is Twilight Years.
And Sadie, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 11 points. And our final contender, please. Your name? Thomas Nelson. And Thomas, you did not win your heat last time around, but as the highest scoring runner-up, you're back, taking the place of Scott Torrance, who can't, I'm afraid, be here tonight. So, thank you very much for joining us. And let me ask you now your occupation. Teacher. And your specialist subject? Sir Bobby Robson. Yes, the football player and manager who took the England men's team to the semi-finals of the World Cup. In two minutes, let's go. In 1950, following a personal approach from the manager, Bill Dodgin, a 17-year-old Bobby Robson signed for which London club? Fulham. Yes, in his early days at Fulham, Robson trained in the evenings to allow himself to continue his apprenticeship in what occupation? Electrician. Yes, what was the name of the Fulham player who was Robson's best man when he married the nurse Elsie Gray in 1955? Tom Wilson? Yes, after a short spell managing Vancouver Royals, Robson returned to England in 1968 to take charge of Fulham, where he signed the future England striker Malcolm McDonald from which non-league club? Tunbridge. Yes, Robson's Ipswich team won the 1978 FA Cup. And the following season, he signed Arnold Muren and Franz Tyson from which Dutch club? 20. Yes, in the two-legged final of the UEFA Cup in May 1981, Robson's Ipswich side beat AZ Alkmaar by what aggregate score? 5-4. Yes, what was the name of the sporting Lisbon goalkeeper signed by the club's president whose poor performance in a UEFA Cup defeat against Salzburg in December 1993 led to Robson being sacked as manager straight after the game? Costinha. Yes, before succeeding Ron Greenwood as manager, Robson took charge of an England team that drew one all with which country in June 1982? In a match that was later upgraded to full international status. Iceland? Yes, Robson joined Barcelona in 1996 and won the European Manager of the Year award in his only season, in charge before he was replaced by which Dutch coach? Louis van Gaal. Yes, Robson's England team beat which country 3-2 in extra time to reach the semi-finals of the 1990 World Cup, where they lost on penalties to West Germany? Cameroon. Yes, in 1997, Robson's Barcelona side won the European Cup Winners' Cup final 1-0 against Paris Saint-Germain in which city? Uh, Lisbon? No, Rotterdam. Which club's 4-2 defeat of Robson's Newcastle side in August 2004 turned out to be his final game in charge of the club as he was surprisingly dismissed only four matches into the season? Aston Villa. Yes. In his autobiography, Robson said affectionately... I've started, so I'll finish. Robson said affectionately that which chairman of Ipswich Town would consume one bottle of champagne if he won a game and two if he lost? John Cobbled. It is John Cobbled. Thomas, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 12 points. And at the end of the specialist subjects round in this semi-final, let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place with six points, it's Sharon. In third place with 10 points, it's Elliot. In second place with 11 points, it's Sadie. And in first place with 12 points, it's Thomas. So now, the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, it's a tie break. So let's ask Sharon to join us again, please. Sharon, you start with six points. You've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. In a common idiom about people's perceived level of contentment, what plant is said to be greener on the other side? Grass. Yes, in the 1870s, which British monarch assumed the title Empress of India? Queen Victoria. Yes, what word meaning to move awkwardly or to struggle in a difficult situation is also the usual name of a species of flatfish common in British waters? Flounder. Yes, what's the name of the lead singer of the band Frankie Goes to Hollywood who had a solo UK number one album in 1989 entitled Blast? Holly Johnson. Yes, in June 2023, the politician Petteri Orpo was sworn in as the new Prime Minister of which European country? Portugal? No, Finland. In geometry, an equilateral triangle has how many lines of symmetry? Two. No, three. Becky Thatcher, the daughter of a wealthy judge, is the love interest of which literary character created by Mark Twain for a novel published in 1876? 
Tom Sawyer. Yes. Which French painter, who died aged 101 in 2023, was Picasso's muse for 10 years and was married to the virologist Jonas Salk? Leonora Carrington. No, Françoise Gillot. In the full title of A Famous Waltz by Johann Strauss the Younger, which European river is described as beautiful and blue? Danube. Yes, in the 2006 film Miami Vice, based on the television series, the police detective Sonny Crockett is played by which Irish actor? Colin Firth. No, Colin Farrell. Oh. The informal American term condo for an apartment building is an abbreviation of what word? Condominium. Yes, which British footballer joined Arsenal from West Ham in July 2023 for a reported transfer fee of £105 million? Pounds. Connor Mills. No, Declan Rice. What's the name of the headland on the Penwith Peninsula in Cornwall that has become a major tourist attraction and is the westernmost point of mainland England? The Lizard? No, Land's End. Watching us, watching you, watching us, watching you was a catchphrase in which 1980s television prank show hosted by Jeremy Beadle, Sarah Kennedy and Henry Kelly, among others? Game for a laugh. Yes. Stracciatella, ice cream, which originated in northern Italy, consists of vanilla ice cream with small pieces of what other ingredient? Pistachio? No, chocolate. Which comedian, author and broadcaster has written a trilogy of books that reimagine Greek mythology entitled Mythos, Heroes and Troy? Stephen Fry. Yes. What wading bird, sometimes called the sea pie, has black and white plumage? A long orange-red bill and reddish-pink legs and, despite its name, has a diet consisting mainly of cockles and mussels. Oyster catcher. It is oyster catcher. So, Sharon, you had no passes at the end of that round. You've got a total of 16 points. Thank you. Next up, it's Elliot. Elliot, you start with 10 points. The score to beat as it stands is 16 points, and you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. What name is given to the fruit of an oak tree? The acorn. Yes. In the early 1970s, the artist Andy Warhol created almost 200 silkscreen paintings of which Chinese head of state? Mao Zedong. Yes. Elizabeth Gertrude, the sister of the fictional schoolboy Billy Bunter, created by Frank Richards in 1908, is better known by what first name? Sally. No, Bessie. The Green Fairy is a nickname for what alcoholic spirit? Absinthe. Yes. What form of electromagnetic radiation was discovered in 1900 by the French scientist Paul Viard? Radiation. More? Pass. The Bee Gees song Islands in the Stream was a UK hit single in 1983 for Kenny Rogers and which country singer? Pass. What word from the Latin meaning for all is used for a single television or radio program, typically a soap, comprising two or more episodes broadcast separately earlier in the week? Omnibus. Yes. What's the name of the Conservative politician who, in 2022, was appointed Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs? George Eustace. No, Therese Coffey, the tennis stadium in Paris, which was built to host the 1928 Davis Cup and became the regular venue for the French Open, is named after which aviator and First World War fighter pilot? Roland Garros? Yes. What's the usual English name for the narrow strait, once known as the Hellespont, which connects the Sea of Marmara to the Aegean Sea? Pass. At the Academy Awards ceremony in 2023, what German language film won four Oscars, including those for Best Cinematography, Best Original Score and Best International Feature Film? Pass. Unless it's capturing another piece, which chess piece can move only forwards and just one square at a time, except on its first move when it can move forward one or two squares? Pawn. Yes. In the television cartoon series The Simpsons, what is Marge Simpson's maiden name, which she shares with that of a real-life US First Lady? Bouvier. Yes. The plant species Gossypium hirsutum is the most commonly cultivated source of what natural fibre? Wool? Oh, no, no, cotton. The Australian $20 banknote first issued in 1994 bears a portrait of which Presbyterian minister who pioneered the aerial medical organisation now known as the Royal Flying Doctor Service? Pass. What term for words such as boycott, sandwich, 
Let's start this off in ish. What term for words such as boycott, sandwich and diesel, which are named after people, comes from the Greek for given as a name? Metonym? No, eponym. Mm. Elias, you had five passes. The Australian $20 banknote bears the portrait of John Flynn. All Quiet on the Western Front won four Oscars in 2023. The Dardanelles Strait is the English name for the narrow strait, once known as the Hellespont. Dolly Parton sang the Bee Gees song Islands in the Stream with Kenny Rogers. And Gamma Radiation is the form of electromagnetic radiation discovered in 1900 by Paul Viard. So at the end of that round, Elliot, you've got a total of 17 points. Next up, it's Sadie. Sadie, you start with 11 points. The score to beat as it stands is 17 points, and you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. Merthyr Tidville, Tenby, and Bridgend are towns in which one of the home nations of the UK? Wales. Yes, in the words of a 19th century children's poem often attributed to the American writer Eliza Lee Follen, three little kittens lost what items of clothing? The mittens. Yes, what word for a craving for alcoholic drink comes from Greek words for thirst and madness? Psychomania. No, dipsomania. What was the name of the original bass guitarist in the Beatles, who left the band in the early 1960s to concentrate on his career as an artist? Pete Best. No, Stuart Sutcliffe. Chantenay, Nantes and Imperator are common varieties of what root vegetable? Carrot. Yes, the Zambezi River flows through East Africa and empties into which ocean? Indian. Yes, what American television sitcom, originally broadcast from 1976 to 83, starred Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams as title characters with the surnames DeFazio and Feeney? Elmer and Louise? No, Laverne and Shirley. In human anatomy, so-called floating ribs, which are attached to the backbone but do not reach to the front of the body, are usually present in how many pairs? Two. Yes, the fifth instalment of a well-known archaeology adventure film franchise released in 2023 is entitled Indiana Jones and the Dial of what? Destiny. Yes, what title of nobility is the third highest in the five ranks of the British peerage, having a status between those of Marquis and Viscount? Baron. No, Earl. What name from a French word for a tuft of hair is given to a wig or hairpiece intended to cover a ball patch? You pay? Yes, in which long distance athletics race must runners complete 25 laps of a standard sized track? 10,000 meters. Yes, what trees, which feature in numerous works by Vincent van Gogh, including The Starry Night, were the focus of a 2023 exhibition of his paintings at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York? Oak trees. No, cypresses. What term derived from the Latin for ring is used in maths to refer to the space between the circumferences of two concentric circles? Sickness. No, Analus, in the name of the nine-member group of economists responsible for setting the UK's short-term base interest rate at the Bank of England, the letters MPC stand for what? Municipal Product Court. No, Monetary Policy Committee. And Sadie, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you have 19 points. Thank you. And finally, it's Thomas again. So, Thomas, you start with 12 points to score to beat to get through to the Mastermind Grand Final. It's Sadie's 19 points, and you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. The term a hole-in-one is most commonly used in which sport? Golf. Yes, which Himalayan mountain was known as Peak 15 before it was given its modern English name in 1865? Everest. Yes, at the 1969 Eurovision Song Contest, which Scottish singer performed the song Boom Bang A Bang, which was declared as a joint winner? 
Lulu? Yes, in the folk tale, The Three Billy Goats Gruff, what type of mythological creature lives under the bridge? Troll. Yes, what's the professional name of the actor who, in the 1980s, won Olivier Awards for his title roles in the stage musicals Barnum and the Phantom of the Opera? Uh, Michael Ball? No, Michael Crawford. Which city was captured and plundered by Alaric, the leader of the Visigoths, in 410, more than 800 years after it had last been taken by a foreign enemy? Rome. Yes, the skewered Japanese dish, yakitori, which translates literally as grilled bird, is usually made with what meat? Uh, chicken? Yes, a musical work entitled Pictures at an Exhibition, which features sections known as The Gnome and The Old Castle, was written in 1874 by which Russian composer? Mazorsky? Yes, which Australian actor played the superhero Wolverine in the 2000 film X-Men and numerous subsequent films? Hugh Jackman? Yes, in a speech in Birmingham in 1865, which Liberal MP famously described England as the mother of parliaments? Gladstone? No, John Bright, what term for a repeat offender or someone who habitually relapses into crime is derived from a Latin word meaning to fall back? R delinquent. No, recidivist. What name for any of the various species of venomous snake of the genus Naja, many of which rear upwards when threatened and produce a hood by expanding their neck ribs is the Portuguese word for snake? Cobra? Yes, in the 1960s television sitcom The Likely Lads and its 1970 sequel, Whatever Happened to The Likely Lads, the title characters Bob and Terry are played by Rodney Buse and which other actor? James Bolan. Yes, the United Nations marked the 15th of November 2022 as the date that the world's population surpassed how many billion? Eight? Yes, which planet in our solar system is sometimes called the sideways planet because its equator is almost at right angles to its orbit, making it appear as though it spins on its side? Uranus? Yes, in the abbreviation SUV for a type of vehicle that sits high off the ground and can be driven over rough terrain. The letter U stands for what word? Utility. Yes, publications entitled The Watchtower. I've started, so I'll finish. Publications entitled The Watchtower and Awake are the main periodicals of which religious movement? Jehovah's Witnesses. It is Jehovah's Witnesses. Thomas, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've done it. You've got 26 points. <laughs> Thank you. So, let's have a look at the final scores. In fourth place, with 16 points, it's Sharon. In third place, with 17 points, it's Elliot. In second place, with 19 points, it's Sadie, which means in first place, with 26 points, it's Thomas. He goes through to the grand final. Congratulations to him. If you'd like to be a contender, in the next series, please go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash mastermind, and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Join us again next time for more masterminds, thanks for watching. Bye for now. When I got the news that I was actually in the semi-final, I was actually in uh, Avignon on my honeymoon with my wife who were sitting in a nice square having a drink and the phone rang and I looked at the number and I thought, I better take this one. And Thomas, you did not win your heat last time around, but as the highest scoring runner-up, you're back taking the place of Scott Torrance, who can't, I'm afraid, be here tonight. Certainly made the next uh, week or so of the honeymoon uh, even better. You've done it. You've got 26 points. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, it was... It's, such a relief to, to have this chance and then and then to take it. Uh, I, I'm just so relieved and happy. <laughs>